Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all having a wonderful time. Here a quick guide for the Aftershock Earthquake Shaman in Lost Epoch. The build is uh, nothing new really, but I've been using it to level up my Shaman and I felt that I would showcase it if you like to do so for yourself as the Shaman is not in the greatest state at the moment. It's a really strong build that can do all content with the minimum investment, which I will show you later on the gear that I'm using currently in this video. And uh, you usually see this build as the Beastmaster, which is the way to go to really boost damage output and uh, really one-shot bosses. But uh, for the Shaman, we get some extra defense instead of damage, which can be useful as the damage is still going to be really crazy good. And Earthquake is uh, one of those skills that's really good in Lost Epoch and the reason for this is all the different more damage multiplier that we get from the skill tree. And we're also picking up the upheaval passive which makes the aftershock hits deal the damage each second which lasts for 3 seconds. Unnebriting is one of the damage multipliers but this also makes the aftershock last longer boosting the 3 seconds to 6 seconds. And by taking the Divining Totem passive, now also makes the Aftershock appear around totems. And this means that we basically will create two Aftershocks, one from ourselves and one from our totem. The Earthquake skill can create two to four Aftershocks and by picking up Magnitude we can increase the maximum by two and Tremor will increase the minimum by three. And by having five totems up all of the time makes it possible to create a Aftershock from each of those totems. And as you can see here, having more totem is going to be making us having more Aftershocks and deal more damage than just having one totem up. By being the shaman we get 50% uh, elemental resist while we control a totem, uh, but also from the protective circle passive from the shaman passive tree will grant us additional 15% elemental and physical resist per active totem. And uh, this will give us a total of 75% physical and 125% elemental resist as we basically have 5 totems up all of the time, making it a very easy to scale our resistance. By specking into Forest Expanse and Grove Mine from the Thorn Totem Passive Tree makes us able to summon 5 totems at the same time and by using a Ornated Idol with chance on hit to summon a Thorn Totem makes us basically never have to summon it ourselves as it will get triggered from time to time as long as we're hitting enemies. Earthquake costs quite a bit of mana and to help with this we are using Swipe which will grant us 9 mana from the Jewelry of Nature passive in the Swipe skill tree whenever we hit at least one enemy. Swipe also grants us Aspect of the Panther which will grant us even more damage multipliers as well as some flat melee damage and attack speed and will stay up for as long as we continue to hit with Swipe. And we also have a auto cost setup for Warcry which helps out for a couple different reasons. First of all we are getting the Berserker buff here which will grant us flat melee damage and also attack speed and will be refreshed its duration as long as we are hitting an enemy. And getting both aspect of the Panther and the Berserk buff before using Earthquake skill is usually the way to go here especially for bosses to get as much damage as possible and even getting some physical resist shred stacks here as well from our blessings for even more damage multipliers. And Warcry can also pull enemies to us making it somewhat easier to clear when doing monoliths but then we also have Whirlpool which will grant us Maelstrom stacks when we are using Warcry. And Maelstrom is basically just for giving us permanent uptime of haste and frenzy Haste for the 30% movement speed and Frenzy for the 20% attack speed. And this we get from having more than 6 stacks of Maelstrom on us and the Warcry will make that for us. Getting some extra mana region here is really helpful as it also costs a bit mana to cost the skill. Also getting a belt with the experimental mod on it that gain us mana gain on potion use and also increase mana region for 4 seconds after you use a potion is also really helpful. The Maelstrom also have a small chance to shield enemies as well which is important to keep up as we get another damage multiplier to the Earthquake to shield enemies from the Shatterquake passive. 
and for defense the primalist is uh, one of the tanker classes out there especially when going low life with ward berserker is a great passive from the primalist tree which gives 20% uh, less damage taken on low life and uh, also providing a huge more multiplier to melee damage which will scale greatly with uh, earthquake and our aftershock in strength for another 16% less damage taken which is going to be multiplicative with the previous one and we also have access to aspect of the boar uh, when we get hit for a 25% reduced damage taken we also get tons of armor from stacking strength which is also providing us intelligence from using the cleaver solution unique which makes your intelligence equal to your strength which also gives ward attention to us so we can reach thousands of ward and we're also getting a more damage multiplier here to bleeding enemies up to 16% and it's going to be times 2 as we're using 2 of these unique axes and to be able to get ward in the first place we're also using the extinguished body armor which makes it so we lose 20% of our health per second but we gain that in ward instead Last step of living for the boots is another item with the same effect. And then also on our gloves, we want to get the experimental mod from the Exile Mage, which also have the same effect as the other ones. And let's check on the gear that I was using. And do keep in mind that I done T4 Yura with this setup and it is going to show you just how insane uh, you can make this build. I'll uh, make a proper setup for the planner if you want to go and see how you really could mid max this build. But here we have the imported character as you can see here by the verification in the right corner. So for the weapons we didn't really hit any of the modifiers that we wanted for this build and uh, the chest is with no LP on it and uh, for the boots we got a strong tier 2 physical resistance. And the gloves just picked up for the experimental mod here, uh, we get some health here as well but nothing crazy here really. And the belt is uh, probably the best item that I have on this build as it gives us flat mana and regen when we use a potion and this makes us able to use earthquake a couple more times to nuke down bosses. The helm is uh, where you want to find yourself with a plus level to earthquake but other than that try to just go for health, resist, some critical strike avoidance for the cap, strength, flat melee damage increased damage over time and physical damage and also some mana region. And I did try out the damage over time here and it do work even though the skill doesn't get the damage over time tag on it but uh, at the same time it's not the earthquake itself that we want to scale here it's uh, the aftershock and it do seems to work at least. There were two things that I didn't have while playing this build. First we have atrophy this provides up to 25% penetration to damage over time and this will work for the aftershock as I just recently mentioned. I felt like the defense from the experimental mode was just uh, so much more worth using than just having more damage uh, but it's absolutely something that I'm going to try and get in the future. Also a Grimoire of Necrotic Elixir with some helpful stats on it like strength or damage over time and this item is uh, super strong as the build scales flat damage so well. And from this we're getting up to 40 flat necrotic damage to both melee and spells and after we've used a potion we also get less void necrotic and poison damage taken after we use a potion. And these just synergize really, really well uh, from the mana example where we get the mana and also from the body armor which we will get attack speed and also movement speed uh, when we use a potion. And another thing that's really important is going to be armor. As we're stacking strength we can get uh, over 100 with a bit of investment here. And as you can see here on the good planner uh, we're almost at 500% increased armor which is really huge. So do keep that in mind to really get like a good base on uh, your helmet and also for your belt is going to be really really huge. Also if you're not using a trophy there are some new great gloves out there with good armor bases on them. Like a thermal gauntlet for example. And for the idols the one to mention here is going to be the ornated idol. Here you want one with a good roll with chance on hit to summon a thorn totem. Other than that you could basically just go for health 
uh, to really scale up your defense here. Nothing crazy really. And for the idols, from the black sun we went with the void resistance. From ending the storm we went for the flat mana. And rain of dragon for the critical strike avoidance. Age of Winter for the chance to apply Shred Physical Resistance on hit. And also Spirit of Fire for the flat armor. And let's go over the skills here real quick. Starting with Earthquake, which is going to be the main source of damage for this build. Upheaval is a node that makes the Aftershock now deal damage over time. And this will hit uh, for each second and Aftershock lasts for 3 seconds here. Unbaiting will increase this duration by 100%, increasing it from 3 to 6. And also giving Aftershock a damage multiplier to 100%. Crushing Wake for another damage multiplier here, 100%. And Shatterquake giving us a 150% damage multiplier here against Shield or Frozen enemies. Divining Totem makes so the Offstrokes now also appear around Totems. Magnitude will increase the maximum possible of Offstrokes by 2. And then also Tremor to increase the minimum possible Offstrokes by 3. And then jumping over to summon Thorn Totems. Force Expanse will make the maximum of Thorn Totems plus 4. Grow Mine will reduce the maximum Thorn Totem by 1, but will now summon all of those Totems at the same time. We're picking up Totemic Wisdom, and this will just reduce the mana cost of Totems. However, the Totem that is triggered from the Idol will not cost any mana. This is only if we have to summon them ourselves. Memories of Ethera is a really weird one. Uh, you regain mana when a Thorn Totem dies or is unsummoned. This gets triggered if we summon our Totems ourselves and replace them with a new set of Totems. But it doesn't trigger when it gets triggered from the idol. So basically this only health is a thorn totem dies for us but we had some extra point to put out but it can be good to know that this doesn't work from triggering the totems from the idol. The most important notes are the forest expanse and the grow mine basically. We're using swipe as a filler skill here. The first note duality of nature and this is how we gain some mana gain when we hit a enemy. We're also using Aspect of the Panther here, and this will grant us more damage per stack. Feline Hunter for some global attack speed. And Lion Strength will just increase the Aspect Panther stacks, but also providing us some global metal damage here per stack. And Culling will just uh, instantly kill enemies when they are below the health threshold, in this case it's 14%. And then we have Warcry, and this is for buffing ourselves and also to trigger Maelstrom for us. Whirlpool provides us Maelstrom stacks when we're using Warcry. Purging Shout also cleans ailment when we're using Warcry. Juggernaut makes us invulnerable for damage for one second after we're using Warcry. Then we have Berserker here, and the Berserker buff, we get it for one second when we're using Warcry, granting us additional melee damage here. Brutality will increase the duration of the stacks and also providing us with additional maximum stacks. Fury Strike now also grants us increased attack speed per stack of Berserk on us. Apprehend makes the worker now pulls enemies instead of knocking them back. And then Shallow Breath just to reduce the colon here by 50%. And this is required for us to be able to maintain our Maelstrom stacks here. And then talking of Maelstrom, this is going to be to keep up for haste and also frenzy stacks. And we need to have six or more stacks of Maelstrom for these to trigger. But with the combination here, uh, this is going to be possible. Could even consider removing one point here and uh, putting it down here for a additional stack. We want to pick up Calm here and this is making some Maelstrom cost less mana. Well pool, make it so the Maelstrom stacks last longer. We're picking up Sleet Footed here for some extra dodge rating per Maelstrom. Arctic Shield makes so the Maelstrom have a chance to shield enemies each second. And Turmoil will just increase the area of Maelstrom by 100%. And here a quick preview of the passive skill tree. But for more information about this build, I do recommend to go and check out the last epoch build planner. To the top of the build planner, you can also go to loot filters, where you can find my ultimate loot filter with a lot of options depending on how strict you want to be. Link for this will be in the description. So what do you think about the Earthquake of the Shock Shaman? Have you tried that before or tried another version of it? Feel free to tell me in the comments below. 
Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And if you got any other questions, feel free to drop a comment and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!